Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Come on, say. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. got a Bible, open it up. Just open it. If you don't have a Bible, open your hand. Amen. Thanks so much, worship team. We're starting a new series today, Faith for the Supernatural. Uh, I want to challenge you to uh, not miss a service. Challenge yourself to not miss a service so you can learn uh, we've got less than 60 days till our year of groundwork is over. Uh, October, we'll be moving into a, a new year for us as Koi. Uh, we'll be moving from a year of poop. Amen. Fertilizer. Praise God. Tell yourself to smile. I need y'all to talk back to me today. And I don't care how you look like how you're looking at me right now, you're not going to detour me from what I got to preach today. So if no one else gets excited and says amen or whatever, throws a dollar, brings some offering to the, to the altar or whatever, I'm going to keep preaching anyway. So tonight we've got worship night. Under the thing, touching heaven, we want to touch heaven tonight. We've got a, a missions trip that we're going to be going on in October to Botswana. So if you're interested in uh, being a part of that missions trip, um, then you can stay after service and we'll have a meeting with you to talk about that missions trip to Botswana. Uh, what's the, what was the other announcement that was played for all those that came a little late? We already start church late. We don't start at 10. We start at 8 past 10. You know. What was the other uh, announcement? Yes, yeah, sign up for a connect group. you learn more about that in the message. Um, but I want us as a church to read Acts chapter 1 through 29 um, for this series. Every day, a different chapter. So today we'll start with Acts chapter 1, and for the rest of the month, we'll go all the way to chapter 29. And the church says...
If you got a Bible, go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Thanks so much, Stanley. I want to teach you something today, and I want to share with you something today that uh, I believe will uh, transform our church, transform our natural lives, transform uh, what it is that we are doing. I want to share with you some information on today and tonight, and for, really for the next eight weeks, on how to have faith for the supernatural. <clears throat> I want us as a, as a local body to begin to walk in the supernatural. I want us to begin to see uh, 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 the deaf to begin to hear. I want us to begin to see the, the, the blind that can begin to see. I want us to begin to see the supernatural. Anybody with me on that today? I, I want us to see a move of God, not here in the four walls of the church, but I want us to see a move of God in our own personal lives. And the church says, I want us to see a move of of God in our personal lives. I mean, when you're trusting God for something and you've gotten to the place where you, can, you can't do anything else, you've reached your natural limitations that God shows up, supersedes what you thought could happen, and then you begin to enter into what's called the supernatural. If you're going to walk in the supernatural, you're going to have to get over yourself. You're going to have to get over your feelings. You're going to have to get over what you wish would have happened and what you thought would have happened and what you expect it to happen, and you're going to have to get yourself in the faith of who God is. See, I told you I'm going to preach no matter what your faces look like. I give a care about your faith, your face. I care about your soul. I care about your spirit. I care about you living a victorious life. And if you're going to live a victorious life, you're going to have to learn how to walk in love. You're going to have to stop being offended. You're going to have to stop getting over all this little pettiness and begin to walk in the supernatural power of God. You can't walk in the supernatural power of God and be living in sin at the same time. you expecting God to show up in a strong way. God, I don't know what to do, but I'm still sinning, but I want you to show up. God said, I can't be moving in that type of thing. Get your life straight. Get your life together. I told you, I don't care if y'all say amen to me or not. I'm, going, I, I, I'm preaching to myself today. I'm going to give myself an offering. I'm going to high-five myself. Good job, Pastor Mike. Even if you don't high-five me, it's fine. I'm okay with it. I am. And hear me. I need, if you're over 50, I need you. If you're under 50, I need you. And I need y'all to work together. Why? Because if we can't work together, then we will not see the supernatural in this church. Our expectation is for God to move in this city. Our expectation is for God to fill this church. Our expectation is for God to move in all the other churches. But guess what? If we can't get over our pettiness, how can we expect the power of God to move? I'm just saying, if we always arguing as Christians... How do we expect the world to want what we have? I mean, if that's how y'all are in the body of Christ, I may as well stay with my family because my family just as crazy. And you're telling me this is the family of God? Why would I want to leave my crazy family and go to an even crazier family? I ain't even got to the scriptures yet. Victory belongs to First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I'm going to read from the Good Word translation. It says, but as the scriptures say, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love. Okay, hold on, let's read it again. No eye has, nor ear has, and no mind has the what? That God has what? For who? Who what? Who what? So, so, so it's telling me here that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has. Um, so the title of today's message is you have no idea. You think God has been moving in your life, but you have no idea. Your eye has not seen what God is going to do for you. 
Your ear has not heard what God is going to do for you. And get this, your imagination has no clue what God's going to do. <clears throat> so here's the thing. We've been getting in trouble because we've been moving based off of what we see. We've been, get, we've been in trouble because we've been moving based off of what we hear. And we've been moving based off of what we think and imagine. So that tells me that if I'm imagining a certain thing, God ain't in it. Because it says that I have no clue what he's prepared. Come on. If I'm moved by what I see, and get this, and even if I'm moved by what I don't see, because what I don't see is me seeing as well. And what I don't hear is me hearing as well. He's saying that, God's saying, I'm, I'm doing something that your eye has not seen. Your ear has not heard, nor have you been able to imagine, nor has entered into the heart of man. Okay, so, 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 so don't, don't, don't beat me up today. Say, Pastor, we love you. I didn't hear everybody say that. <laughs> See, that's the problem. That's the problem. How you, how you expect God to move in the supernatural in which you can't see when you can't even follow the directions of the natural. Let's try it again. Pastor, we love you. I didn't hear nobody in the audio booth say it, and I know y'all supposed to be in the audio hearing audio. Let's try it again. Pastor, What's wrong with some of y'all? See, get this. You want God to move, but God can't move until you open your mouth. Y'all going to force me to go there for 40 minutes. See, in order for us to walk in the supernatural, number one, I got to teach on it. And number two, I got to break up some ground. Meaning I got to break up some of y'all hearts. Hearts are so stony and, and, and dusty that the God couldn't even move if you wanted to. The supernatural, when we're talking about the supernatural, we're talking about something that's above nature. Something that science, something that the natural eyes, something that is unexplainable by natural law. If I'm talking about the supernatural, I'm talking about something that you cannot explain by the law. The law of gravity, the law of lift, the law of pull, the law of whatever laws the law of Sir Isaac Newton, whatever the law is, whatever goes up, comes down. It is unexplainable. I want to begin to see if somebody walks in with some crutches that they leave out without them. I want to see you walk in and you trust in God. You believe in God for your brother or your mother or your in-laws, whoever it is to be saved. And all of a sudden, before service is over, you get a phone call, such and such got saved today. I want us to be so, so saturated with the Spirit of God that, that as we're worshiping, you get a text message that you left your grandma or somebody on the bed, and they were bedridden. All of a sudden, they up cooking a poiki. Now, that's what I want, but the question is, is that what you want? Come on, church. Okay. If I'm going to walk in the supernatural, it's not going to make sense to my natural eye. It's not going to make sense. If it makes sense, it's not the supernatural. If I can do it on my own, it's not the supernatural. Okay, so let me tell you something about God. Maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't know this, but there are no boundaries with God. 
There are absolutely no boundaries with God. Why? Because his power is strategic. He doesn't waste his time. He knows exactly how to hit the bullseye every single time. So there's no boundaries with God. His power is strategic. His power is eternal. Forever. And lastly, his power is unlimited. I want us to tap into the unlimited power of of God. And the church says, am I the only one? Then tell your face, I want to see the supernatural. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Twenty-six. Go back to 1 Corinthians 2, 9. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love, love him. Faith is acting on what I believe. So if I believe that there can be an unexplainable movement in my life, I need to act on it. What does that mean? If God says that I can lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover, if I see a sick person walking past me, I need to begin to act on what God said. See, the move of God in your life can only happen when you first, number one, have the word of God and you begin to act on that word. If you don't act on the word of God, then you can't have a move of God in your life. Why? Because the move of God is always going to be preceded by the word of. So for a lot of us, we put more emphasis on the, <laughs> on the man of God versus the word of God. Meaning... My job, my responsibility is simply to give you the word, but your job is to take that word, chew on it, until it becomes revelation for you. Why? Because I've gotten a revelation to teach you, right? But that's my revelation. You're going to have to now take that, chew it, break it down, and then get out of it what you need so that it becomes a revelation for you. The moment it becomes a revelation for you, you begin to transform other people's lives. See, the, the, the goal of this series is to move us from saying, I want you to meet Pastor Mike so he can change your life, versus saying, you know what, I got a word that will change your life. Why are you laughing, Auntie Marcia? Think about it. Think about it. <clears throat> what would life be like if you were at work and you could begin to prophesy into someone's life? They didn't have to wait till Sunday or midweek service or going to the man of God to get the prophecy. The, the word came out of you. What would it be like if you were working? Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all got to get this. You were working and the boss shut down work for the day and had everybody lined up because, hey, man, let's get the word of the Lord for the day. What would it be like if in your own house, man, that as when you woke up that you began to speak what the word of the Lord for the day was in your family's life? Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with women, but men, we're supposed to be the head of the house. Okay. Here, I'm, I'm going to expose the devil right now. Here we go. I'm going to expose the devil right now. We've got a, a, a prayer group. All the people who are in the prayer group who pray, stand up. Y'all meet once a week and you pray. Don't you know who you, you pray, right? Stand up. You, you in the prayer group. You guys. I don't want you. Look, problem. Stand up. St keep standing. Problem. I didn't say sit down. You're in a prayer group. Okay. How many? 
is how many, <clears throat> where the men at? Just one. Y'all not liking this message, huh? Pastor, this is supposed to be about faith for the supernatural. Why are you talking about men's ministry? That's the problem. If anybody should be leading the prayer group, it should be the men. Dr. John, am I right or wrong? Men are the head of the household. Can I say sit down? Y'all going to get this man of God upset. Stand up, prayer, prayer group ladies and gentlemen. We need more men to be in prayer group, to be leading prayer group. Now, I'm not saying that the women should not be leading it, but I'm saying that men should take lead. How can we expect our sons to follow after us if we can't take lead? And the church says, you, may, you can be seated now. Thank you so much. Bless your hearts. So if we want to if we want to move in the things of God, we've got to begin to put some things in order. God can't bless what's out of order. If a direction is given and is given, get this, with a good intention and a good heart, you should receive it that way and move on that. That's what the word of God is. It's the direction of God. So we should receive the word of God and we should act on what the word of God is saying. And the church says, <sighs> okay, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, three, it says, no eye has seen, no ear has, and no mind has the, the what? That God has what? For what? Who what? Okay, now get this, y'all. Jesus told us in the Bible before he left, he said that we'll do greater works. He, he told us that we'll do greater works. So if he, if he had to, and he didn't say to the apostles, he just said going to do greater works. So if, if he was able to take some mud and give it to a person, they put it on their eyes and they can see, if he was able to, to, to raise the dead back to life, we should be doing greater works. <clears throat> Which means we can only do greater works based off of the proportion of who we believe God is in our life. So if my proportion of who God is is this small, I will only be able to do greater works based off of that. If my faith level comes up, then I can do greater works based off of my faith level. So do I really believe the word of God, this is going to get so good, y'all. Y'all going to stop looking at me crazy. If I want to live in the supernatural, I'm going to have to leave the natural. I'm going to have to leave what I see. I'm going to have to leave what I hear. And I'm going to have to live in a state of whatever God's word says it is so. Are you with me, church? I'll give you some examples. <clears throat> remember Peter? Y'all remember Peter? in the Bible. Not your friend, Peter. The Peter in the Bible. This is, this is going to be so good. Peter was in jail and the church prayed for him. The Bible says that they prayed earnestly. They prayed with, with zeal for Peter. Now, Peter gets out of jail super Hold on, I'm going to show you this, y'all. He gets out of jail, how? Supernaturally. He walks up to the prayer meeting. Now, this is not a, not a, not a uh, what do you call it, a strike against prayer meetings. Pa Pastor Irwin, just hear me on that. This is nothing against prayer meetings. I just want to show you something. He shows up to the door of the prayer meeting, and he knocks one person goes to the door, sees that it's Peter, doesn't open the door, goes back to the prayer meeting and says, I know we're praying in the spirit. I know we're praying and trusting God for Peter, but Peter's at the door. 
And their response is, no, he isn't. Why? Because we didn't get the press release, it wasn't on the news, and nobody's been tweeting about it. A lot of us pray with zeal, but we have no faith. So maybe the reason why we're not seeing the supernatural as consistently in our life is because we're praying with so much zeal, but we have no faith to back up the zeal. You've been praying all night long for Peter, and Peter's at the door, but your thing is, no, it isn't. Why? Because it's not based off of how you wanted to see it, which means your faith is based off of what you want to see meaning it has to come a certain way. If it doesn't come a certain way, then it must not have been from God. But guess what? God says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Okay, stop clapping, because you might be mad at me after this example. Remember Zachariah and Elizabeth? They wanted a baby. They was married. I had to, you know, there's a lot of single folk out there. I always got to <laughs> put them disclaimers out there, you know. Hey, don't be coming to my office. Pastor, I was believing in God for a baby, and look what God gave me. He's like, no. <laughs> no. That was your flesh. That was not the supernatural. That was the natural. This was they wanted the baby. Angel of the Lord came, says, you're going to have a baby. Zach, can I call him Zach? Zach didn't believe it. Why? Because it didn't make sense to him. But guess what? If God gives you a word, I hope it doesn't make sense to you because that means it's going to be the supernatural. If it makes sense to me, then it's got to be something that I can do in my own natural ability. But if it does not, oh man, I want a word from God that does not make sense to me. When he tells me to step out and buy the $20 million house and all I got is $1 in my account, it doesn't make sense. Which means, God, you're going to have to do the supernatural. We need a new building. Don't look at me like that. I don't own this building. The church does not own this building. We are, they won't even rent this building. We're leasing this thing out for an event hire. Don't ask me to hold particulars of it because it won't make sense to you. It's supernatural. <laughs> but we need our own space so we can put in there exactly what we need whenever we want to. Did I say that on tape? I'm sorry. To buy this, I don't know how much it costs. There's another piece of property I saw, it was 32 million. Another piece of property, 18 million. God, I need the supernatural. Why? Because in order for me to get a piece of property, the way giving is going, I need the supernatural. No, I'm being honest, I'm being serious with you. In order for us to do things, it requires us to all give and contribute and sacrifice. Anybody go to a restaurant? Do you eat? Do you walk away? First you what? If it's what? If it's good to you. If it's not good and you send it back, your expectation is not to pay. I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> we got to trust God for the supernatural. Man, T, can I share the story? You know which one. You know... You know which one? The one, you know, I didn't, I, I hadn't had it for, you know, a while. You know, what do you think? I see if she don't say yes, then I can't, I can't do it. Y'all nosy, but that's my wife. I got to sleep with her tonight, at the next night. Huh? What would you say? Yeah, yeah, nay. Are you my wife? Who you mind? This ain't no? <laughs> he just said, so let it be. He for sure is not my wife. <laughs> I like things that are soft without all that hair. <laughs> Zach, Elizabeth, you're going to have a baby. They don't believe it. Something transforms. Nothing happens. Immediately, 
but, you know, Zach can't speak for a while. He, he, he's stuck. He's dumb. But then when the, the angel shows up to Mary, says, Mary, you're going to have a baby, but I'm not married. I'm just Mary. <laughs> you're going to have a baby. Her response says, be it unto me according to your word. Some of us need to have that. Be it unto me according to your word. If we're going to walk in the supernatural, we need to begin to say, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. And then all of a sudden, supernaturally, because she got in agreement with God's word, didn't question God, didn't question what he said, didn't question when will it happen. He just, she just said, according to your word, be it unto me. Some of us need to take the word of God and we need to say, according to your word, be it unto me. And live supernaturally, just trust, trust in God, trusting in what his word says, according to your word, be it unto me. If we want to see a move of God in this church, we've got to walk in here with an expectation, according to your word, be it unto me. I'm reading through the book of Acts. We're going to read Acts chapter 1 through 29. What's wrong with some of y'all Bible scholars? Ain't nobody corrected me yet. Thank you. Finally, somebody to say 28. Yeah, but guess what? You're going to be the 29th chapter. That's why we're reading Acts chapter 1 through 29, because after the 28th, I'm, my expectation is you begin to be 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 40, 45, uh, why? Because it wasn't supposed to stop at 28. It was supposed to continue on. Young people, even at your school, you should be able to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. I'm saying somebody get injured on the, on the, on the soccer field, on the football pitch, and someone gets injured uh, 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 during rugby, you should be the one running out there in the name of Jesus, need be healed. And then all of a sudden they get back up and they just, well, how'd that happen? It's the power of God. It's time out for all this spiritualism to where we say, well, you know, how long have they been around? Mary ain't been around. All she said was, according to your word, be it unto me. Church, are you with me? I am not upset. Hear me. I am not upset. I just want to see a move of God. In order for me to do that, in order for me to see it, I need to teach you. It should not be just the man of God who should have the prophecy. The, the, the prophecy should be coming from anybody. If you're saved, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? So you can walk, get, walk in the supernatural. The requirement for getting filled with the Holy Spirit wasn't you got to be saved for 10 weeks. We see at Cornelius' house, they got saved and then immediately they got filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, in order for you to preach the word of God, you need to have been living right for the next 2,000 years. You should be living right for 2,000 years so you can preach the word of God. In my Bible, it shows me that Peter uh, uh, denounced God, abandoned God, denied God, said, I don't even know who God is, got filled with the Holy Spirit and taught the first message and didn't ask nobody, can I teach? Something happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit you get this boldness on the inside of you to declare who God is. It's not a boldness to be disrespectful. It's not a boldness to go off on people. It's not a boldness to give people a piece of your mind. It's a boldness to declare who God is in your life. It's a boldness to say, this is what God's word says, and I'm going to do it. Are you listening to me today? Are you listening to me today? Say, Pastor, we love you. See, that's what's wrong with some of y'all. Y'all can't even say, Pastor, we love you by faith. I remember Lady T was mad at me. We had broken up for like the 15,000th time, and we were sitting in the office, and we was on the same team. We were on this fire team, and she was mad at me. I was mad at her, and our leader said, we can't move forward. We can't have a move of God until y'all settle your, your issues. And so Miss D, she's sitting there in the office. She's like... Do you, do you love him as the body of Christ? We used to love each other. And she, no. 
So she kept going on, and we kept going on and on until we could say we love each other. And her response was, I love you by faith. Well, that's good enough. We can live by faith. Because <laughs> some, some of y'all are unlovable. You got to love people by faith. And we will not see the move of God in this church until we can begin to walk in love and we can get over our cliques, over our clickism, and over this ism and that ism, this schism. If we can get over that and just say, I want to show up, I want to worship God, I want to see God move, I want to hear the word of God for myself, and I want to transform my city. If we can get on one accord with that, we will see a move of God. Okay, I'm sorry, let me calm down. Praying the spirit. Where was I? Hmm? Mary. Thank you, Lady T. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Which tells me, if I'm going to walk in the supernatural, you might want to write this down. Don't let what has always been hinder you from what will be. Don't let what has always been hinder you from what will be. Well, I've always been saying this, and God's never shown up. Stop being moved by what has always been, because that's going to hinder you from what will be. Because God's word will be. It's not a, you know, it might possibly be. It will be. God has ordained each and every one of us to walk in the supernatural. I'll say it again. God has ordained each and every one of us to walk in in the supernatural. God has ordained each and every one of us to walk in the supernatural. If you are a believer, if you are blood bought, blood washed, God has ordained you to walk in the supernatural. God desires you to walk in the supernatural. Okay. 2 Corinthians 2 9. Let's read it again. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going we're to get the practicality of this tonight. 1 Corinthians 2 9. Put it back up. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Here we go. Here's the here's key right here. You ready for this? Your eye hasn't seen it. Your ear hasn't heard it. Nothing's entered into your heart. The things which God has prepared. Didn't say preparing. Preparing means I'm still in the process. He said God has prepared. That means that something has already been done. Preparation creates anticipation for the manifestation of the promise. Let me break this down. Whenever I go back to Cali, Los Angeles, for Christmas, my mom prepares a Christmas dinner. All week long, I know she's preparing, but the day we show up is already been pre. So as we're opening presents, I'm building an anticipation for the promise. What's the promise of the most amazing meal that I will probably eat this year? Because that Christmas dinner, oh, AC already knows, she's fine. Don't be pointing at her like, she already know what's up. She already know. We already be, you know, negotiating. Go in there and learn. Okay? Go in there and learn. Learn. My dad would be like, you know, you guys should be preparing meals. No. The learning process has not been completed yet. 
you. I need a graduation certificate. But the preparation and what's been prepared creates this anticipation for the manifestation of the promise. So whatever's been promised will manifest as long as you have an anticipation on what God's already prepared. Okay, go to Ephesians 1.3. Real quick, I don't want to turn them over. Ephesians 1.3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every what? Where? In who? Okay, but he says he has, not he is. He has. Not he is, but he has. Past tense. So he has already blessed us with every spiritual what? Blessing. Okay, you want to hear this? Okay, come back tonight, I'll tell you. No, it's because I know, you, I know not everybody's going to come back tonight. I know, I already know how. Just because you pray does not mean that God is preparing something for you. The answer was already created before the need. Oh, that didn't, you didn't, you didn't get that, because not enough of y'all were like. <laughs> the answer was already created, was already done before there ever was a need. We humans are the only ones that scramble to try to get the answer when the need arrives. But God's saying, I've already prepared the answer before you even had the need. So when we're praying, when we're praying, we're not praying to believe in God for the need to be answered. We're praying to God for the need to be translated from the spiritual. So that tells me that in order for me, and that's what we're going to keep reading in 1 Corinthians 2 next week and tonight, that tells me that the only way that I can get these spiritual blessings is when I communicate with God's spirit. The only way I can walk in the supernatural is when I begin to communicate with God's spirit and get in the mind of Christ. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the... When I read and I get a revelation on that, I sleep at night. In the midst of turmoil, in the midst of my marriage being broken, in the midst of my kids not acting right, in the midst of my bills not being paid, in the midst, why? Because that's what I can see. But the scripture tells me I need to rest so that I can enter into the finished works. Some of y'all have not been resting. I'm not talking about sleeping. I'm not talking about sleeping. Because you can sleep but not be resting. Because your mind is still going. Rest means my mind shuts off and I have not a care in the world because I've casted my cares on him. The Bible says, as he is. Oh. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. If he's sitting down in the midst of a world in turmoil, Why can't I sit down in the midst of turmoil? I'm telling you, we got to get to the point, y'all, when supernaturally there could be chaos going everywhere and we're the only ones just sitting there. The news report comes. This is going to be the worst financial year ever. <laughs> Businesses, hold on. Nobody's going to be spending money. No, because guess what? If God gave me this business, he's going to supply it supernaturally. Yeah. I need y'all to get this, man. I need us to stop playing games. 
all the way to the back wall. I need us to all stop playing games. We need to stop playing this church thing. We need to start living supernaturally in our finances, in our lives, with our husbands, our wives. If they ain't acting right, I'm trusting supernaturally something's going to change. My kids, they ain't acting right, I'm trusting supernaturally something's going to happen. Well, Pastor, what if it ain't happening yet? You still, you looking at it as supernaturally it's done. For the work, for the, for the work, before the foundation of the world, works were already done. So, I went a month, almost two months without a paycheck. Y'all, did y'all know? Supernatural. Money just showed up. Things were taken care of. Food was on the table. How? Supernaturally. What does that mean? Either you're going to trust God or you're not. If you're living in what God's called you to do and called you to be, and you've been sowing seeds, when that anticipation shows up, it puts a demand for the promise to manifest. I sit there, two, almost two months trying to, I mean, I'm in D.C. <laughs> brought five empty suitcases. How in the world and tarnations we going to fill those things to bring it back? I don't know. We're just going to trust God because we know what the kids need, but I don't know. Super. Are you hearing me? Sometimes we give based off of what we see. But you need to give based off of what you want to reap, which is something you can't even see. Some of y'all treat who? Some of you treat your husbands the way he treats you. Because he's been mad at you, you're going to just be mad at him. I has not seen nor... Father God, give me a sight and a hearing and an understanding on how to treat my husband or my spouse better than they're treating me. Why? Because I reap what I, even though they're not sowing to me what I think I should be reaping, I'm going to reap what I. So if I want that person to change, then maybe I need to change how I'm sowing into them. Victory belongs to him. Ultimately, victory belongs to me as well. Because as 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 so I need to learn how he is. Oh, y'all missed that one. Some of y'all follow all the latest blogs. How to dress, how to do this. You'd be looking at him, looking at yourself. Who wore it best? If I want to, as he is, so am. <clears throat> if I'm tired of the, how I am, I might need to start looking at how he, because the more I focus on how he is, then it begins to translate on who I. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for this word. We thank you for teaching us and training us on how to begin to walk in the supernatural, breaking up the fallow ground and stony hearts and replacing them with hearts that are malleable and allowing you to form who we should be, causing us to understand what it means to live by faith and what it means to walk in the supernatural. Thank you, Lord, as I give these invitations that lives will be changed Lives will be transformed and people will say yes to you. In Jesus' name. First invitation is this, is maybe you've never accepted.